Well, the elk have absolutely destroyed one of my gardens. So I had used this deer netting, which is not the greatest stuff, but it did keep the deer out. I came out yesterday though, and three of the four sides were down and massive damage to the garden. So this has actually been my least productive year of gardening in my entire life before the elk came in. It has been very cool, a very cool summer. Let me show you my corn. So there's my foot, there's my corn. All of my corn is only a few inches tall or most of it. Now, the elk did come. I mean, look at that, it's just ridiculous. Look at this is my hand, hand corn. It is August 27th and this corn was planted in May. We should be eating corn by now. All of the plants that really like warm weather, they like a little heat, have really struggled this year. Many of our days were overcast and in the 60s, not the high 60s either. It's all stunted and tiny. It's also chomped off. Chomp, chomp, chomp. My daughter said, well, at least something got to eat off of it. That's true. The green beans down here, I had already replanted them because the deer had come down and mowed them all down and ate them before I put up the deer netting. They had grown beautiful, perfect blossoms just starting to give us green beans. And the elk came through and chomped them. Two rows chomped. So all of this was squash. There were over 40 plants, mostly zucchini. The ones that they didn't eat were uprooted or just completely gone. They did get into the oat patch a bit. I don't know if you can see, but the a lot of the middle part is just squished down and gone. It's just really, really sad. This was a lot of work. These are the healthiest looking ones I have left. Look at the rest of it. It's, it's massacred. Let me show you the sunflowers. The first night they just trampled through a little bit and then the next night they trampled through more. So here we go. Over here, they walk through here. Oh my poor little babies. These are big animals. Wherever they walk, there's going to be destruction. It's the end of August, so part of me is just like, why bother? But then I have a whole bunch of transplants that I'm growing for winter, and that's where I was going to put them. So that's my main thing is the winter issue. I'm actually impressed that that deer nutting lasted as long as it did. It did repel the deer, so that's good. I didn't want to put real fencing around, only because where I live, it's really hard to find the fencing that we need. We need tall fencing and it hasn't been in stock around here. We just found about a half hour away fencing that is six feet tall. Ideally, it would be seven feet tall, but even all around us for two hours, that fencing has been pretty much impossible to find this year. I did not want to put money out on short fencing that we would just have to replace later and wouldn't really have a use for it. Those guys can jump really high. So I went and bought this product. I saw good reviews for deer, elk, all kinds of little creatures because it smells horrible and their sense of smell is very sensitive. So it was $15 and I thought $15, if that will protect the outside of my fence area and repel them, I can do that. It didn't even go all the way around the fence and it is completely empty. So I Googled, how do you make this stuff? And I can make something that's supposed to repel deer and hopefully elk with rotten eggs and stinky milk and stuff. So I'm going to give that a go. But first I got to get the fence back up. So, so we found this deer repellent recipe on Bob Villa's website. So I will link to that below in the description box. Right now we're floating eggs to see which are our oldest eggs. Usually we save those for the dogs, but this time we're making our magic deer repellent potion with them. Ooh, that's a good one. It's 
pretty good. Recipe calls for three cloves of garlic, three eggs, three tablespoons of cayenne pepper, three tablespoons of milk, and then that gets blended with some water and then it gets strained and poured into an empty um, gallon jug. And then we fill up the rest of the jug with warm water. I think I'm gonna double the ingredients because I want it really, really, really stinky. So we're gonna go with six of all of those things. Can't hurt, right? Uh, we're gonna go with six tablespoons of milk. Six garlic's gonna go in. Okay, so we're gonna add the six eggs into the blender. Ooh, don't miss. Good job. And our six tablespoons of chili powder or cayenne powder. This is what my straining setup looks like, but I can't do it one-handed, so let me strain it. All right, this is really thick. It's not straining at all. It's not straining at all. So I think I'm just gonna put it in the jug and mix it with water. I'm not sure how I'm gonna apply it yet. Maybe I'll use a paintbrush and paint it onto the fence. That would work. So I'm just gonna try to get it. Oh, it's so thick, it's gonna be hard to get even through the... <laughs> okay, well, and you might have to be standing there a while helping Grandma, huh? Look, um, it's standing up. I think I'll get something and try to shove it down in there. Oh, wait, wait, let's wiggle. I can see it going down when we wiggle. Wiggle. Okay, we're going to fill the jug up the rest of the way with warm water. Try to get that warm water. Interesting. It's just been 24 hours, like the directions said, and as you can see, it's doing some weird separating thing. I don't know what that could be. Maybe, maybe the milk. There isn't that much milk in there though, really. I mean, can you see that? Can you see the clod? The clod of something? Let's look inside. That's a little weird looking. I don't know about this. 24 hours isn't really all that long to make it very stinky at all. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply it all around the outside of the fence anyways, just because. You're supposed to take your magic potion and let it get ripe, which they say for 24 hours, but if you let it stay out longer, of course it's going to get more stinky, which is what we want. And you're supposed to actually um, strain it, put it into a spray bottle and spray it on your actual plants. Well, I'm going to spray it all on the fence. I don't really wanna put it on my plants. And hopefully the scent gets two cool creatures away. Yeah, put some more in there. Yeah, that's gross. They did leave me. They did leave me some little prizes. That stuff's really good for the garden. Good fertilizer. Still have a little left. What I did was I did a top. I took the brush and did a top smear along the fence and then I did one at the bottom and then I took the brush and I sprinkled this solution all around the base of the fence hoping that whether their heads are high or low they'll get a nice whiff and they'll find it disgusting like I do. Actually I'm not sure we can ever really tell if the deterrent worked or not because the elk come the elk go. Usually once they start though I mean in all fairness that field is their place where they rest at night during parts of the summer every single year. Now, they came two nights in a row. Um, so I, I suspect a little come some more. And if they don't do any more damage or tear down the fence, maybe it worked, but there's no guarantee because they usually come in the evening when I'm not over there. So we might never know <laughs> if it's actually, um, if it actually works. However, I have had these nasty, rotten, super stinky eggs hanging out by this bed. And I didn't think they would repel anything. I was just going to bury them in the soil to make the soil enriched. All spring and summer, these strawberries kept getting eaten. They would just get munched down to a little stub. But right now, they're looking really healthy. So maybe the odor from those eggs did keep the deer and elk away from this area. I don't know, but it's possible. I'll definitely keep you posted. That's all I've got for today. So until next time, see ya.